BioBalance HealthCast episode 244, Supplements for Diet and Good Health. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Do you take dietary supplements? We found in our research that at least a third of Americans today are taking some kind of dietary supplement on a regular basis. And what this means for physicians such as Dr. Maupin is that they need to be conscious of that reality in the lives of their patients and they need to start uh, training themselves as they were not trained in medical school to ask about dietary supplements when they're discussing symptomology and health care with their patients and, they, and they need to have some familiarity with whether or not any of these supplements are thought to be beneficial right. and for what you know what do people mm-hmm. take and what are that what is that for and, and so on and so when uh, the recommendations in the literature are that doctors begin to educate themselves about this uh, and whether or not these things work and one of the challenges that they they run into and, and we'll discuss as we go through today's podcast is like if you take herbal supplements uh, an awful lot of people have diets that include elements of these supplements as a regular part of their diet Mm -hmm. and then you have a supplement that's a concentrated extract of this particular Mm -hmm. ingredient and that's a whole different way to take it and it has a whole different meaning and so then the medical question becomes which is the chicken and which is the egg you know if it's part of your regular diet is it beneficial if you you just take it as a concentrated supplement Mm -hmm. and, and do you need more you know, well, like, uh, you remember, I mean, most herbs, we take a lot of herbs, or herbs are recommended in many at many times uh, and by many doctors, by lots of stuff on television. I mean, that's that it's unregulated, so people can say anything yeah. about an herbal supplement. It Ginkgo doesn't, have, Balboa. It doesn't yeah. have to be true. Right. So, so, first of all, you have to remember that our first medications came from herbs. Mm-hmm. So herbs are powerful and can be powerful. We first many digitalis is a is a the flower. Sh- the shaman and the medicine woman. Right. Had, had a role. I mean, um, white um, birch bark is uh, aspirin, and I mean, there's a lot of things that we've taken from herbs and. Now people are going back. The pendulum is has swung, and now we're trying to go back to more natural um, kind of supplements instead of medicine. But what what we run into is that we know a lot about medicines and all their side effects, and all their the things they can do, in the interactions. But we don't know a lot about the herbal world. Right. So there's there are a lot of studies. You'll see on the front page of the paper where, where they'll say vitamin E doesn't work for fibrocystic breasts or something like that. You have to look at the study. If they underdosed, mm-hmm. if they didn't use the normal dose or they right. used a low dose, then they're just trying to prove that that doesn't work for some reason. Well, like you sell a supplement at your office that many people take called DIM. Mm-hmm. And it's a, a broccoli reduction. It's made of broccoli and cauliflower, but it's not just broccoli and cauliflower. Actually, it's, it is just that. But it's it, it has two side chains. It, it's reduced, right. and so we've taken off part of the molecule that makes it broccoli or makes a cauliflower, and found the active ingredient in it. Right. And so that is what it's in the bottle. You can't eat enough broccoli and cauliflower. That was my point. And it, it does not <laughs> you have to eat act, acres of broccoli. It and cauliflower. does not act the same way. Mm-hmm. It's it, it's an antioxidant as broccoli and cauliflower, but this blocks the conversion of testosterone into estrogen. Mm-hmm. A lot like a Remedex does without the side effects. When you pull just the active ingredient, when you have to have the active ingredient it and purify right. it. That's right. Then then you get that as an uh, an incision, an interaction to. Mm-hmm respond to the testosterone uh and prevent and prevent too much estrogen so that's why we use it It decreases belly fat and it does a lot of really good things every single supplement i have at my office we have tested we've compared to other brands we make sure we look at all the research before we ever recommend it and then we make sure we had the best brand on the market so we even private private label some of these because they're so good so you can't find the same thing somewhere else with the same name it doesn't do exactly the same thing well and one of the challenges about buying supplements and especially buying them at large chain stores or off of the internet or from china or wherever uh, is 
there's there's they don't have the same regulation of production for the ingredients. There's not consistency. Mm -hmm. If you take uh, St. John's Wort for antidepression mm -hmm. versus taking an antidepression pill, mm -hmm. the the where the St. John's Wort is grown, where it's manufactured, how it's manufactured, the consistency within a bottle of those pills, mm -hmm. pill to pill it's, to pill, is not established. No, and, and, not, and not controlled by the FDA. Not controlled by anybody. And, and St. So, John's Wort, like if you had, if you took St. John's Wort for depression associated with Parkinson's, you'd make it worse. Right. I mean, there are a lot of interactions you don't really think about or know about. Or know about. That we yes. have to know about because you're on them. I'm prescribing drugs and, and medications too, and I don't want to give you something that will conflict. So doctors are being trained to consider discussions about uh, supplements because a third of the people now are, are taking them. Uh, they're, they're being trained to consider, you know what, you need to bring this up, you need to talk to your patients about it, but, but how do you approach that? And the recommendation for physicians is that they start not with a discussion of specific supplements, mm -hmm. but they start with a discussion of four fundamental healthcare domains. Mm -hmm. And they say, let's look at your overall behavioral profile, your overall health profile. Let's look at, number one, your nutrition. Mm -hmm. What do you eat? How do you eat it? Mm -hmm. You know, How's it prepared? So on. Uh, do you eat mostly whole foods? Do you have a largely plant-based diet mm -hmm. with some meat? I mean, mm -hmm. like vegans don't want to eat meat, mm -hmm. uh, but you always argue that they there are certain critical ingredients that they're not going to get. That's right, if they don't eat. If they don't eat meat of some kind. They have to take kind of some kind of supplement to take the, place. The secondary domain is uh, exercise. What is your level of daily exercise? Do you get your heart rate up three times a week or more uh, for 20 mm -hmm. minutes or more? Do you exercise certain elements of your body that you're, you know, like your knees that you're having trouble with? Uh, how do you flex them? Do you climb stairs? Do you ride a bike? Do you walk? Do you run? Because it all makes a difference on how you exercise. Well, most of this is related to the specifics of the mm -hmm. the research that we've been looking at. Is how do you how do you deal with diabetes in a world where there's supplements and right. And there's terrible food out there, and how do and it's very important for a diabetic to take in the right food and to get the lowest weight. Mm -hmm. So, in saying that, you have to look at their their intake of food, their complete diet. You have to make sure that there's nothing missing for them, mm -hmm. and uh, you have to look at their exercise, mm -hmm. and you have to look at what you're trying to do for the diabetic. So. There aren't many medicines that help bridge the gap of a bad diet. Right. So, most important thing is to get out, take, excuse me, don't eat the things that are bad for you, but when, how do you get enough nutrition? So start by avoiding the negatives that right. are known negatives. Then begin to look for improvements, whether that's an exercise regimen or the third domain mm -hmm. that doctors are encouraged to encourage their patients mm -hmm. to practice is a, a formal and systematic stress management program. Do you meditate? Do you relax? Do you do relaxation? Do you do imagine, uh, uh, imaginary uh trips, you know, take a little mini vacation, do you pray, whatever it is that you call it, do you have a, a structured and trained pattern for centering yourself and calming yourself down and relaxing? Breathing. And, yeah, deep breathing. Deep breathing is breathing. one of the most important things you can do. Because stress is, a, is something that we all have and we all have too much of. Mm -hmm. And that affects our blood sugar. As soon as your cortisol goes up, your blood sugar goes up. So decreasing stress in a diabetic is even more important than decreasing stress in everybody else. And, and not many people realize that or know that. Mm -hmm. but, you know, I mean, you, I would laugh at you if I came to your office for treatment of diabetes, and the first thing you said to me is, "We need to lower your overall stress." Because I would say, "What's the connection? What's the relevance?" Right. And right. you know enough that you can explain that to me. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't know that. Uh, so that's important. And then the fourth domain <laughs> that doctors are encouraging patients to practice is to have a formal support network, mm -hmm. a formal medical support network, mm -hmm. a nurse that you know, a doctor that you know, a treatment Not as a friend, we're talking yeah, about uh, people who are treating you, Yes, but a an endocrinologist, words. a family practice doctor, right. um, a they need podiatrists, they need someone to take care of their feet because their feet don't get good, uh, excellent um, uh, circulation. They right. may need a cardiologist. They may, I mean, there's a group of doctors, you almost need a team approach for a diabetic. Right. My, my advice is, <laughs> don't get type 2 diabetes because, by being overweight and right. eating too much sugar and carb. Right. Keep exercising, get it before it happens, or when you're starting to get there, 
preventative lose intervention. Weight and, yeah, prevent it because yeah. that's the that's the best, the best way, way not Absolutely. to spend your life in the doctor's office and, and not to die of diabetes. That's right, or some some um, secondary reason, secondary uh, like heart attack that's secondary to diabetes, but it's really dying of something else. Well, and they've they've so improved their monitoring and treatment of type two diabetes that uh, I was talking to the physician, not you, not long ago, who said we rarely have to amputate anymore for Thank diabetes. Gosh. You know, but we used to see people all the time that would have parts whittled away because their blood flow to those parts of the body didn't work, and yeah, those parts of the body would, died of that. would atrophy, and so they'd whack them off. Yeah, uh, I'm very I'm familiar with diabetes on both sides. I'm, yeah. My maternal and paternal sides all had diabetes. So, so. so that doesn't happen much anymore, but there still is a decline to the point of death for a lot of people who suffer from type 2 diabetes. And the best way to not be in that system is to avoid it. And mm -hmm. it is predominantly avoidable. Not in every case. But so, so what the endocrinologist then did, and the, right. the next step mm -hmm. is... If you do have diabetes and you're doing all of these things, mm -hmm. then people come in with supplements. So they studied them. They tested them to see if they could find out whether the these supplements actually worked. So they looked at chromium picolate, which most people use to diet. And they said, mm, does this really work or yeah, not? Right. And they found it did work. And it really helped with their blood sugar. It kept their blood sugar from going as high and as low. So it helped modify their blood sugar. So the Journal of Endocrinology found that that was an adequate treatment, not alone, to add to your treatment. To help as a supplement. As a supplement. To add, supplement means in addition to. So add to your you're not going to get that in your diet, so add to your medications to help your blood sugar and decrease your triglycerides. So is there a, a brand name or a, a vitamin label or something that is chromium? I chromium? don't have that. Yeah. I don't have that, and they didn't recommend one. Right. And I actually don't have that in my office stash at this point. Okay. I haven't studied each brand to each see which is the best. Well, and the research that we were doing talked about uh, some of these things that are known to work like that, mm -hmm. uh, and like cinnamon mm -hmm. yeah. for specific things, mm -hmm. and some which are known not to work right. for specific things. Well, they went through a list of different of different supplements, okay, and they found that one that's also taken for supposedly for diabetes is alpha lipoic acid, yep. and they found that that doesn't help. It doesn't help lipids. It doesn't help triglycerides. And it doesn't help blood sugar. So you're wasting your money. So you're wasting your money if that's what you're taking it for. It doesn't mean it's a worthless supplement for other things, but for this, for diabetes, it is not something that you need. One physician that I was talking to recently said that they, when they talk to parents of young children about taking daily multivitamins, mm -hmm. that what they're really getting is just a very expensive form of urine from their child, that there's no real benefit to that I have for to, a child I, who has a healthy diet. Yeah, I don't know any children who have healthy diets. You can't get mm, kids to eat good point. the right things. They aren't going to eat all the green stuff and fruit. And they there's too much junk out there when they're not at home. Yeah. I don't believe kids have or a healthy home, diet in America. I think maybe they might not, in, in they, Italy. They might they might in France. But they don't have America does not have a healthy diet for kids unless they're homeschooled and they never let out of the house. I mean, sugared soda is everywhere. I mean cotton candy. I mean, there's, there's, there's just stuff we feed our children. In the world of Warcraft and a bag of Cheetos. <sighs> yeah, that's what I mean. You can't keep them away from They don't. It, I know. They killing. don't. That's yep. what I'm saying. They need a vitamin. They need a multivitamin <laughs> at the very least. Yeah. I mean, just, just to supplement their diet. Yeah. I mean, I guess there's maybe one mom out there that's been very... No. No, you can be a food Nazi all your life, and, and you can't prevent people from cheating and getting the things that they're marketed for or that they crave. We, I mean, these we have were addictive ingredients. I know. I mean, they're, I know they're carbs built. are addictive. They may. That's why we have diabetes. We have so many carbs in our diet. Right. They were meant for for running. Like you're supposed to eat carbs before you go do aerobic exercise, but not. Not because when you sit behind a desk or you sit in school all day. Yeah. That's not what we're supposed to eat that for, and certainly not sugar. Sugar goes away too fast. Yeah. So they looked at, um, they also looked at cinnamon. They wanted to right. know if it helped um, reduce fasting blood sugar, because that's important. The, the blood sugar that while you're sleeping, basically, uh, your cholesterol and uh, triglycerides, and it did. It decreased 
It decreased fasting blood sugar. Mm -hmm. It improved um, the total cholesterol, decreased it, and it decreased triglycerides. And it also improved the HDL cholesterol, which is the good one. Right. So surprise, cinnamon as a supplement, and as uh, it's 120 milligrams to six grams, which is a lot. Um, so you're day. not going to get enough just eating cinnamon toast. No, no. and there's sugar on that. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, I mean, you think cinnamon? Okay, I had some cinnamon, but that's not how it works. So yeah, you're right, and I can't even say the next supplement. I have never heard of this before. Tianqi. Yeah, Tianqi. T i a n q i. It's a Chinese herbal supplement. And it's to help with prediabetes. Yes. And they said that it works. They said the, the research says that this particular Chinese herbal supplement reduces type 2 diabetes by almost a third. It's a combination of 10 Chinese medicinal herbs in a capsule. But again, if you take medicines from China, you don't necessarily have the consistency and you don't have the regulation of the right. productive capacity. And it goes back to our original discussion uh, about herbal supplements in terms of the diet of the region. If the foods that these people eat ordinarily in China, mm -hmm. where they're primarily taking this uh, capsule, is it the volume of the ingredient in their food mm -hmm. or is it the concentrated element in the capsule? And the research just doesn't show. But this was done on 10 Chinese herbs. I mean, mm -hmm. they. I would think that this would be from a Chinese pharmacy. This would not be something yes. that you would over order over the internet. I think it would be made for you from actual herbs. I don't know. So it'd, it'd I mean, be interesting that, to find out. They didn't specify how they did this testing either. So magnesium right. is huge. Magnesium. Every single person that I know needs magnesium because we just don't get enough in our diet. Right. And that is something that I recommend to almost all of my patients. It's a muscle relaxant. It helps your brain. It. I mean, it basically helps your bowels move. Magnesium is one of the things that we're all short on, and we should all take it. But it also helps with type two. To, Diabetes. I remember my grandparents taking a product called Philips Milk of Magnesium. Yeah. It was a chalky liquid <laughs> that they would drink, uh, and and I don't I don't even know if it exists anymore. I just remember that they always swore. I think, by yeah, it. but that's it. that's Milk of Magnesia is for uh, I think for constipation. Well, they were, and so that would that would fit for them. <laughs> so so magnesia in general, when we get magnesia, there's certain t kinds of. <laughs> magnesium that we give to patients that don't cause diarrhea but do improve the peristalsis of the intestines so it is it is something that I think that we use we use magnesium gl glycinate so that does not cause diarrhea okay. but it does get into the muscles it does help your brain it's it's very important these are things that they've proven they've tested and this is this is mainstream medicine right this is the um, the Journal of Endocrinology. So, right, this is where we're getting our information. Um, I guess lastly, you take omegas, omega three and six. Right. So they have fatty acids in that that help your hemoglobin A one C to be even. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I take it for cholesterol to decrease cholesterol and to improve HDL. But I'm also helping my blood sugar with that too. Right, and, and I have a familial history of type 2 diabetes on both sides. And mm -hmm. so we're trying to do all the preventative maintenance that we can do. Maybe we're related, so do I. To, to protect <laughs> me from that. Yeah. And so, so then a final point uh, for recommendation for physicians in, in terms of saying physicians need to educate themselves about this and to interview their patients about their use of supplements mm -hmm. or uh, alternative medicine strategies that mm -hmm. they may also be practicing. And one of the warnings in this journal of endocrinology is that 68 percent of the patients who practice alternative medicine do not tell their doctors that they also practice alternative medicine so i'm doing whatever you tell me to do but i'm also telling you what the witch doctor down the street recommended or that i saw on the Don't internet say witch doctor. i'm sorry <laughs> The alternate alternative medicine doctor down the street. I mean, there are some very excellent alternative there, medicine doctors. There, there are, are acupuncture. I've gone to acupuncturists. I mean, there's. I there think are, it's a two thousand year history. I mean, there is. They have more history treating diseases than we do. Yeah. So that wasn't the group I was talking. About. Oh, okay. <laughs> In any case, um, I think the way I get around that is I ask, 
what are your medications on their entry right. um, information, and what are your supplements? Right. And people write all their supplements down. Yeah. And so if you ask the question, and, and you don't have to ask it verbally, you can have it in front of you, yeah. then you can go through and ask about ones that you don't know you don't know anything about and see but, if they interact. But see, the benefit of working with you for me, a benefit of that has been that you've explained all this to me because I'm, I'm naturally resistant to authoritative commands. <laughs> and when I go to my doctor's office and they say, write down all your supplements, I don't do it because I don't think it's relative. I didn't used to do it because I didn't used to think it was relative to what I was seeing then. Okay. For. Now that I've had these conversations with you, I do that because I mm -hmm. understand. Okay. But well, that's good. I, I wonder... How, How many people don't my write response that down? Is, who don't write it down say, oh, it doesn't matter. Well, you then I say, do you take vitamin D? Yeah. And they say, oh, yeah, I take vitamin D and B and it. You know, so if they didn't write anything down, I just ask an no, obvious answer. I should write a and recite the whole list. Yeah. Right. So I ask an obvious, an obvious question so that I get the rest of the answer. Hopefully. And, and hopefully that's what mm -hmm. people give you. It, it is relevant. It is helpful. There are questions about the specificity of the help when you start talking about food as a diet or nutritional supplement versus taking a supplement that's a concentrated extract mm -hmm. produced in a lab somewhere for a specific gain like DIM mm -hmm. as opposed to eating 12 acres of broccoli, which you couldn't eat that much and have any benefit. But, you know, we get our testosterone and our estrogen from yams and soy. Right. So it's the same process. But you can't just go eat dim, sweet potatoes But either. you can't just go eat yams and soy yeah. and get those two hormones. We have to cleave off part. It's just like organic chemistry. You, you use a chemical to cleave off part of the molecule that's contained in that fruit and vegetable. I f or vegetable. I find that it's interesting that we have many of our own hormones and many of our own needs in food. Well, it's, just, it's almost biblical. That we can you have go to find separate it. the grain from the chaff. <laughs> you know, and, and all the rest of that stuff is chaff. And you have to pull it down and concentrate it, and then you get the benefit from it. That's right. But it's it's very cool to me to find that yeah. it's, it's all there for us to find. Yes. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.